Welcome back shop rats. Today here in the shop we're going to have a brief discussion about why I fix cars that nobody else would touch. Let's just get into it. I'm Mike and this is My Car Shop. Working out of a 100 year old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are the essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. I thought it would be great to uh, do something a little different today. I've been trying to do some different things on Tuesdays. And I thought I would talk a little bit about why I pick cars that most people would deem beyond repair. Um, I like fixing stuff on the cheap. And that's one of the reasons I do fabrication. It allows me to have a lot more cars than if I spent money on buying all the replacement parts. For another thing, I like the creative process, etc., etc. We just did an episode on why I fabricate, so I don't want to end up down that rabbit trail. But I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about why I pick the cars that I do. Uh, if we look at the, the Stitches Challenger, which is just right next to you that you can't see, it's all over the channel here. It's probably the most popular car on the channel was a car that I picked up for, I think, $300 out of a junkyard pile. This car right behind me uh, was, a, was a rusted out pile of garbage. Now, the roof was caved in, um, tons of fabrication, bought very little parts for this car and put it together. I picked that one up for 500 bucks. 74 Swinger that's in the back room, we picked up for 300 bucks. Um, I look for those cars there are others, I don't want to get into all that, but I look for those cars that are pretty much just scrap value. Something that the average person would look at and say, that thing is rusted out so bad, I don't even want to, you know, it's not worth it. Those things excite me. For one thing, it allows me to get into cars that I probably wouldn't be able to afford in any other way. I look at the price increases, for example, on, on eBody Mopars, and, and they're just skyrocketing through the roof. A guy had a set of air conditioning vents uh, out of a 70 Cuda, I think it was, that I noticed today on Marketplace for 500 bucks for three air conditioning vents out of the dash. Well, that's completely beyond my reach. But one of the things I love doing is buying these cars like this for a few hundred dollars and then scouring the web looking for those deals where somebody's got like the driver's quality tail lights that we bought. Guy had them in his garage, just wanted to get rid of them. Picked them up for 300 bucks. Uh, those are worth a lot more than that, but he just wanted to get rid of them. They were driver's quality. I'm thrilled. The, the brand new bumper that was a takeoff that I got for half the cost of a new one. Um, the, the instrument cluster that we got uh, from, or excuse me, not the instrument cluster that was donated from a viewer. Um, the the dash bezel that is coming, I haven't received yet, that I found, it's just, it's ratty and trashed, but all there and not broken for 40 bucks. And we can go on down the long list. I love those super steals and I love those super deals. When I find something that uh, is pennies on the dollar and I can put together a very, I won't say a high dollar car, but a higher dollar car, um, and, and not have a huge amount of cash into it. And of course, the one thing that ends up costing is time. It takes time to scour the web and find these things. It takes time to build these parts by hand. That's the enjoyment. I love finding the deal. I love the creative process of fabricating, as I've said many times. Um, that's what I love about the hobby. I don't get a big thrill out of, and I've done it, don't get me wrong, I've definitely done cars where the bulk of work I did was my checkbook, uh, writing check after check after check and swiping my credit card to buy everything to do a car because I wanted to get it done quickly. I'm not against it. It's just not where my joy is. Uh, I love going to a swap meet when I found the the tail lights, brand new tail lights, or new old stock tail lights for this 47. Um, it was a thrill to find those packages, these brand new, still in the Ford envelopes, and pick those up for, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that. It was a steal. I love finding those. I love the adventure of that. It takes time to do all of that. But you look at this car right here behind me, and it's gorgeous. It, it's not even wheeled out yet. It's mostly painted. I still need to paint the grill and the hood. I've been working on this thing for over 10 years now. Um, but when I drive this car, I don't have a huge 
amount of money into it considering what the value of this car is. Now, will I sell it? Probably never. Um, will I sell the Stitches Challenger when it's done? Probably not. Um, there are other ones that I probably am going to push down the road eventually, but, uh, but these two are probably here to stay for a long time. Um, but I do it because, like even right now in doing this episode, there is just a relief from the daily stress. I love just immersing myself in either talking to you guys or to searching the web or searching Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or whatever it is and just immersing myself in the possibilities. Now, sometimes that can backfire and be frustrating. For example, I just ran across a perfect original grill for the 70 Challenger for 300 bucks. If you know the value of those things, that's a real steal. I happen to be broke right now and it's not possible for me to do that. But I bookmarked it just in case in a couple of weeks when I could afford it, I can go ahead and order it. I'm so far away from needing a grill for that car. But if I find a good deal, I'm going to pick it up. That's what I like to do is just watch for those deals. Watch for those things. Um, that, that's part of the enjoyment of the hobby for me. I don't enjoy spending the money uh, on, on all new stuff. Like I said, it's it's... It's the creativity and the escape from the stupidity of everything going on in the world, especially right now. Let's face it, as a general rule, it's an expensive hobby. There's, there's no doubt about that. If you're impatient and you want the best of everything and you want everything new and you want the car to look exactly like it was when it was brand new, it's very, very expensive. The price on these cars, like I said, it just blows my mind what they're getting for garbage. And then the price just goes up from there. It's, it's what entry level on a B body, 30, 40 grand, or on an E body, I mean 30, 40 grand on average. I see them going for 60 to 90, uh, and then they just go up from there. It's insane. That's way beyond my reach. But if you think I'm going to let that stop me, am I going to put myself in severe debt over it? Absolutely not. I have my own way of doing it, and that's really the point of what my car shop and this channel is all about: is to say. You don't have to drink the Kool-Aid. You don't have to do it that way. If you like Kool-Aid, if you like doing it that way, um, that, no judgment here. That's totally fine. I have, I have very good friends who write checks and that's how they do their cars and they don't do any work themselves. I've done work for them. It's actually helped fund some of the stuff that I do. I don't have a problem with that because it's people who, who have those deep pockets uh, that enable the industry to produce all the stuff that they do to keep the hobby alive. So there's, like I said, uh, no criticism from me on that, but that's not what I enjoy. I could sell off eight of the nine cars here and maybe build one with all brand new stuff, but I really wouldn't enjoy it. Uh, as I said, for me, I do it on the cheap because that's what I love. I love the deal. I love the, and I love the creativity. Um, that's why I do this. Plus, I, I tend to be, well, if you're familiar with my uh, stage persona and my stage name in the band, shameless plug for Iron Fist, um, my stage name, my nickname, well, my nickname has been since I was a young teen, Rebel. And there's a reason for that. That is definitely a big part of who I am. It's not entirely who I am. I'm smart enough to know not to lose myself in that persona. But by the same token, uh, that is really a large part of who I am. And the song that I played here on the channel when we were celebrating our uh, 500th subscriber is called Breaking the Rock. And I've quoted this before, but it really indicates my mindset. The words that we penned there, contend it can't be done and we will prove you wrong. And there's, there's a part of that um, that definitely appeals to the rebel in me. There's a lot of naysayers, and I'm not really doing anything to prove anything to anybody else at this point. I do things to prove to myself. And yeah, I get a chuckle out of some of the criticism and the flack I get, but most of that's going away, I think, because uh, the proof is in the pudding. I, I think the work that I'm doing here um, is non-traditional for sure, but I think it's starting to speak for itself. And that, as I've said so many times, I know exactly what I'm doing. I just don't necessarily know whether it's the right way or not. Um, I just know what I'm doing. And I want to share 
what I do with you. So that's the whole point of this channel. And I just wanted to sh take a little bit of time here today and talk about why I do cars on the cheap. I think there's something that if, that we can we can renew our mind a little bit. We can change the way we think a little bit. We can we can save a bunch of money. We can do a hobby like this on a relatively low budget. I mean, the biggest expense out here over the years has always been tools and equipment. You got to have some basic stuff, and I certainly don't have top of the line stuff. I've got a MIG welder, a TIG welder, a torch, plasma cutter, uh, a bunch of hand tools. I got a, you know, I, even my paint guns to paint that 47 Ford. They're not high dollar guns, um, but there's certain things you have to have, and I would prefer to buy the tools and equipment that continue to produce for me over and over again, and then go out and spend $1,200 on a set of taillights for the Challenger, and uh, $500 on a bumper, et cetera, et cetera. That adds up real fast. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope that it's been enjoyable. I hope it helps you understand maybe where I'm coming from, although I think with uh, about 280 episodes on the channel now, you probably already knew some of this, but I think sometimes it's just fun for me to just share some things, and hopefully uh, you walk away with something that um, can inspire you to look at things differently. Uh, I know I've had a lot of comments in the last few weeks from people who say that uh, I've inspired them to look at their projects differently and try new things. And I think if we're accomplishing that, then we're accomplishing my hope for what my car shop is all about. All right, that'll do it. We're on the face thing. Instagram loves us. Uh, we're here on the you thing, of course, because you're watching. And if there's one thing I try to convey in every episode that is so important, Rock! Mm -hmm.